Good day guys. Um, welcome back to our channel. It's been a long time since we uploaded a video. Um, just a little update on the channel before we start with today's video. Um, I'm going to try and do uh, videos in bilingual language. So I've been thinking of uh, writing a script and then doing a video, hence it's been taking so long. Um, turns out I'm not very good at writing scripts. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do what I'm doing right now that I would just freeball it. Um, I'll have the video edited, do all the text and done, get them all lined up, finished, and then I'll just do the voiceover as the video is playing like I normally do. I think that will be the most genuine way of doing it. Um, and let's see if that creates more buzz on YouTube for us. Or I hope it does. Uh, well, let's see. I'll start with some Hindi and Punjabi, and then I'll slowly, uh, hopefully, I can find somebody to do German for us too. So everything kind of lines up. Uh, but anyways, let's get into our today's video. So um, this was a special a uh, month ago. Uh, so we did a rack of lamb with Rojo sauce. Uh, we served it with. Um, Cusco salad, but I'm changing the starch to yellow rice on the video. And just because I know there are people who want to eat lamb all the time, I also showed a simple marinated paneer that could be served with it. Um, the paneer itself can be the entree. Uh, you can just serve the paneer with the ginger sauce. Um, and just completely skip the lamb if you like to make it completely vegetarian. Um, anyways, uh, I hope you will enjoy this video. If you like it, obviously share it. Uh, that goes without saying. Uh, if you didn't, let us know what you think uh, was missing and what we can improve on, especially in terms of the videos, and we'll go from there. So let's get into our prep and mise. Um, to start with, you're going to need onion, a paneer, a spice mix, um, which I'll show you how to do, uh, or which is in the recipe, I should say. Paneer, uh, we mentioned uh, yogurt, lack of ram, uh, turmeric powder, coriander powder, and roasted cumin powder. Um, so to start with, uh, we're going to clean our ram off first. Uh, quite easy to do, if you know what you're doing. I didn't go full Monty on it like it's supposed to. Mm, I, like the way it came out though. Um, so to start with, you just cut through the fat line. You can see a line there and you just run your fillet knife through it. Uh, be careful with the knife. Uh, if you're not comfortable holding it this way, I would suggest you getting cleaned already. But I prefer to do cleaning myself. And once you have the fat off, uh, kind of take the little excess fat between the ribs itself. You know, just hold the lamb sitting on, its, on, on the line and just cut through between the ribs on the meat and then basically cut like a rectangle piece out of it. So what are you trying to do here is like make sure you're trying to make sure that the lamb doesn't have any fat on it and all you see is just the uh, meat. A little bit of fat is alright, that will just, just melt away when you cook it, but you want to take off as much fat as possible. Um, it doesn't have to be completely trimmed, but the more you can trim it off, the nicer it will just look on the plate. Anyway, so go through all the ribs, um, getting the fat. You will get a little bit of the meat off too. Um, don't panic. Uh, yes, you will lose a little bit of the yield of the lamb, but that's expected. I mean, you can't be just perfect every time because every lamb loin is different. Or every rack of lamb is different, I should say. So once you have those done, uh, you're going to start scraping the fat off the meat. So you take Pull the fat off and just use your thumb and run it through it. Now, uh, a 
again, just like the, we did with the chicken fabrication, you want to do, you want to keep the knife away from the meat and into the fat. Um, so you will lose a little bit of the yield, like I said, uh, that's normal. Uh, once you have the fat off, start working on the silver skin. Um, again, like I said before, you want to keep the knife angled away from the meat. Uh, if you angle it downwards, it would chop off more of the meat than you should. Um, so you always want to keep it away from the meat. It doesn't have to be completely off it, like I would say about 15 degrees should be more than enough to get the skin off and trim the meat and without losing a lot of meat. Here's where I made an exception now. Remember I told in my second fabrication video like you should use always use the back of knife to scrape extra excess fat off. Here I would suggest you use the front of the knife, the blade side of the knife. You'll see once we played up why I said uh, said that um, the lamb itself has a lot of meat on it. Uh, so it's using the back of the knife doesn't really clean it all the time. So it's better to use the sharper side of the knife to get everything off. Again, I don't like to clean it completely. I know some chefs like to clean it completely, like it should be bare bones. I like to see a little bit of the fat on it. Not a lot, just a little bit. Once your lamb is cleaned up, just season it and we're going to marinate it. Uh, simple seasoning and marination. Just salt, pepper, ginger, garlic, um, cilantro, some roasted coriander powder and cumin powder, and yogurt. And just marinate it and let it sit in the refrigeration until you need it. Make sure you cover all sides of it, from front and back. So if you don't like to see the bones on it, um, I should have done a video of this, but I didn't. Um, you can just take the bones off, and all would you you'll be left with a, just a loin. Um, it will be smaller than what you normally get out of the actual lamb when you butcher the whole lamb, just because this is uh, chopped off in a way where it's supposed to be served like with the bones on it. Um, but it's an easy process. You just Gonna slice through where I'm putting the rub right now. Uh, just slice through there, uh, go underneath it, and make like a semicircle with the knife, and that would get the meat off the ribs. Anyways, um, after you marinate it, just wrap it and store it until it's needed. So we go on to doing a plain marinade now. So you just need a little bit of yogurt. Check the measurements and the recipes in the below, in the description. Um, add two tablespoons of oil. I added one extra tablespoon just so be, just to be sure I have enough oil in it. Uh, one tablespoon of ginger garlic paste. So our ginger garlic paste is very simple. Uh, I think I mentioned this before, but I'll mention it again. You just take ginger and garlic, you chop it up. Put a little bit of salt in it. Let it sit for sit for eight to twelve hours, and then you just puree it with some oil in it. So about a tablespoon of lime juice. Uh, you don't have to use the squeezed lime. I just threw it in the marinade just for the heck of it. I didn't want to waste it, so uh, just to make sure I have enough lime flavor. But you can discard the shells if you want, or make lime water if you if you will. Anyways, um, then goes our roasted coriander and cumin powder mix. Uh, we use Kashmiri chili. Now, uh, two tips here. Uh, if you want to use paprika, um, I would highly suggest not to use it. Try and find Kashmiri chili. But if you have to use paprika, I would suggest you use small paprika or at least Hungarian paprika. Don't get anything that's super fancy. 
we just want to give a little bit of red color to the marionette. And we're going to see that too. Let's dice up need into any shapes you like. I did cubes just because it was easier and it will show up on the plate much better. But depending on if you're doing this as a main entree, then I would do more pieces, uh, maybe smaller pieces. It's up to the chef that's making the food how he wants to dice it for me. Anyway, so we mix everything up. Uh, this marinade can be used for anything. You can use this for chicken, for beef, for pork, whatever you want to make. This is just a basic marinade. It doesn't have to be just for paneer. So when they are paneer, a little bit of salt, and pepper, and then get mixing. Yes, you have to get your hands dirty. Anyway, just mix it you know, and just let it sit until you need it to bake. And so, on to our sauce. Again, the measurements are in the recipe. So just slice and dice your onions. Uh, it's up to you what you want to do. Uh, I like to dice it because it's just uh, cooks faster. And then same for the dice tomato. I believe you need two tomatoes uh, to get the measurement that we have in the recipe. Um, and really, that's all you need. You already have the spices in. We have the roasted coriander cumin powder made, we have the turmeric. Anyways, uh, to mix the sauce, we go into the stove top, put a little bit of oil, a little bit of ghee, um, throw in our dry spices, those are bay leaf, bay leaf, uh, cardamom and cumin and cloves and black cardamom. After they start spattling, or they start cracking, uh, we throw in our onions. So we're just going to caramelize the onions. Uh, don't do it on high heat. I would suggest doing this on medium to low. And let the uh, onion just cook. Uh, the more caramelization they get, the more flavor they'll give to the curry and the more color they will go to the curry. Uh, you can blanch the onions beforehand if you want to move this process a little bit faster. Anyways, while the onions are being done, we can sear our lamb. Again, I would suggest using a gas frying pan. It just gives a more equal heat. Um, it's probably one of the best things human beings have ever made, in my opinion, but I digress. So you see what I mean by leaving a little bit of the fat on the bone. You can see those caramelization of the fat on the bone. It just looks nicer to me. I don't like to completely clean the lamb with the bone. You can see the two on the right are completely cleaned, and the ones on the left still have a little fat on it. And I prefer the one on the left, the way they just look. Anyway, you can see once the onions are halfway through the caramelization process, throw in your ginger, garlic, and spices. Again, I wanted the sauce to be a little bit brighter, not too dark. So again, uh, make sure you mix your spices with water. Um, I didn't mix them with water, so I had to throw water afterwards. Um, make sure you throw a little bit of water in the spice if you throw the spices whole in the onion mix. They help your spices not burn from the heat, um, and it helps quicken up the process of kind of getting the spices cooked. Um, remember to always mix them with water. Uh, it's a tip I can give you. Um, some people do know, a lot of people do it, but most people don't. Um, this will save you a lot of headache. Uh, you'll see most of the times. Um, people who don't know how to make curries, they will just burn their spices because they would just throw them straight into the mixture and 
the pot would be way too hot. So always mix them with water. And like I mentioned before, depending on how much color you want to give to your curry, is how much you want to cook your onions. Anyways, I like prefer to have a lighter looking curry, so I did this, um, this color. And once you're happy with your uh, spices, uh, you smell the spices and you think they smell good, they smell cooked. It shouldn't take more than two, three minutes. Uh, and throw in your uh, tomatoes. Uh, you don't have to dice them because you're going to blend them anyways. Uh, but it would be nicer if you dice them really small and not big chunks like I did. Uh, especially if you don't have a blender at home. Uh, the smaller you dice everything, the less you will have to blend it at the end of it. Uh, anyways, after you cook them for another 5-6 minutes with the tomatoes in it, and you let the tarka cool down a little bit before you blend it. And then you just blend it to the desired smoothness you like. Be it a little chunky or very really smooth. I prefer really smooth, as you can see here. With that, our sauce is done. And to finish up our dish, we just need to roast off our paneer and our lamb. So paneer basically just take out of the marinade and just line up on a parchment paper and just bake it off for five, I would say six minutes at the most, and then torch it. And they go in the oven at 350. So I will cook it till 145, no more. And that's how it should look, pink on the inside. That is beautiful looking lamb right there, man. Uh, the paneer depends on how you want it. Uh, you can cook paneer longer if you want. Uh, the longer you cook, the more dry the yogurt gets and the more crust you get. Anyways, this is a finished plate up. Like I said, I like this look on the lamb where you have a little bit of fat on the on the bone. Uh, just gives it a nice e even color from top to bottom. I don't like to completely clean the bones off. It just looks very weird to cream white things sticking out of a beautiful lamb. Um, anyways, I hope you give this dish a try. And we'll see you in the next video. Uh, again, we're gonna stick to our Indian theme and we're gonna do a dessert. Indian and Italian kind of fusion. Uh, we're going to do a masala chai, um, masala chai and panna cotta. That should be a really small, very short video. Uh, shouldn't take more than 10 minutes to make, let's say. Anyways, um, we'll see you in our next video. Cheers, stay safe.